بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والهم أما بعد. Today's ayah we're going to look at سورة الأنفال verse thirty three. الله سبحانه وتعالى says وما كان الله معذبهم وهم يستغفرون. And Allah shall never punish them as long as they are asking forgiveness from Him. And Allah shall never punish them. وما كان الله معذبهم. This is a statement of fact that Allah revealed when the Quraysh made fun of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Unbelievable. They threatened, they mocked, and they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why doesn't your Lord send down a punishment? They're making fun of the Risala. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala responded to their taunts. Allah said, I shall never send down the punishment as long as there are some people amongst them that are still saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. This ayah demonstrates for us the power of istighfar, the power of saying astaghfirullah. Because of astaghfirullah, because of seeking Allah's forgiveness, the calamity upon people who would otherwise deserve it has been averted away. And this, brothers and sisters, is the month of istighfar. This is the month of Ramadan. This is the month of Tawbah. This is the month of Rahmah. This is the month of Maghfirah. And so, let us remind ourselves of the blessings of istighfar, of the positives of istighfar, of the reality that this concept of Tawbah, of repentance, of seeking Allah's forgiveness, is a constant theme throughout the entire Quran. It is no exaggeration to state that out of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the names that deal with Allah's forgiveness and Allah's mercy are more than all of the other names. The majority of Allah's names, they deal with mercy and compassion and forgiveness. Ghafoor, Ghaffar, Arhamur Rahimeen, Rahman, Rahim, and on and on and on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked the concept of istighfar. He has linked it with the very kalima itself. The kalima is linked with istighfar. Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah was Astaghfir li dhambik. No, there is no ilah other than Allah. And then say, Astaghfirullah for your sins. Allah links the istighfar with the kalima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that he taught istighfar to the prophets themselves. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Adam got some phrases from Allah. Adam was taught some phrases from Allah. And because of those phrases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. What is the, that phrase? We know. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ So the prophets would do istighfar. Nuh alayhi salam, he asks Allah's forgiveness in the Quran. Musa alayhi salam, فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ تُبُتُ إِلَيْكَ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Musa does istighfar. Ibrahim as he's building the Kaaba, he says, alayna innaka anta tawwabur rahim. Forgive us, O oh Allah, you are the Tawwab and the Rahim. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He himself told us, he says istighfar more than 100 times a day. And so, is it any surprise that when Allah describes the believers, this is in over six verses in the Quran, whenever Allah describes the believers, he mentions the concept of istighfar. And especially saying istighfar during the night prayer, which is what we're doing right now. This is the night prayer. Especially saying astaghfirullah during the night prayer. Wabil ashari hum yastaghfirun. That they would say astaghfirullah and they would ask Allah's forgiveness in the night time. So of the characteristics of the righteous is the constant saying of istighfar. Now, you would think astaghfirullah should only be said by the impious, by the wicked. As I already explained, the prophets are saying istighfar. And the Quran teaches us, we say istighfar even at times of victory, at times of conquest. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتَحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ At the height of the pinnacle, at the conquest of Mecca, when you see people embracing Islam, you are at the height of your career, what should you do, Ya Rasulullah? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Ibrahim alayhi salam is building the Kaaba and he is seeking Allah's forgiveness. The Prophet told us when we finished the salah, it was his sunnah. The first thing he would say after the salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum, what would he say? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. So istighfar isn't just done by the wicked, it's not just done by the impious, it's not just done by the sinners, it is done by the righteous and it is 
also done by the sinners. Brothers and sisters, understand the beauty of this concept. Wallahi, because we hear these khutbas and durus all the time, we take them for granted. Thank Allah for the blessing of istighfar. Do you know how blessed you are? What does it mean, istighfar? It means Allah will forgive you simply by wanting to be forgiven. That's it. How do you get forgiven from a major sin? How do you get forgiven from a kabira min al-kabair? Whether it is drinking, whether it is alcohol, whether it is drugs, whether it is gambling, whether it is zina, how do you get forgiven? Can you believe Allah has gifted us the concept of istighfar? And what is istighfar? All you need to do is to genuinely desire Allah's rahmah, Allah's maghfirah. That's all. It's as easy as that. Allah says in the Quran, whoever asks my forgiveness, he shall find me ghaffar and tawab. Whoever turns to me will find me over there. Brothers and sisters, this is a concept that is unique to our religion. We don't have to have complicated rituals. We don't have to offer sacrifices. Of course, if you do extra, it's good. But the bare minimum of istighfar, the bare minimum, what is it? It just means you approach Allah with a sincere heart, with a heart that is admitted and acknowledged, I am a sinner, with a heart that is genuinely full of regret and remorse. And you approach Allah humbly, meekly, and then your hands go up and your tongue says, Ya Rabb, I have committed a sin, forgive me. That's it. It's as simple as that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Who else can forgive sins other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh Muslims, this is the month of Ramadan. This is the month of Rahmah. This is the month of Istighfar. I make a plea to all of us, myself and all of you. I make a plea to all of you. No matter how sinful your lives have been, no matter how far you have strayed from the path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. And Allah loves to forgive. Wallahu yuhibbu tawabin. Allah loves those who repent. Oh Muslims, it is never too late to repent. It is never too late to come to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He literally calls us to do tawbah and istighfar. Why don't they repent? And why don't they ask my forgiveness? If they do so, they would find Allah accepting their repentance and they would find Allah ever merciful. Oh Muslims, never lose hope of Allah's mercy. Oh Muslims, it is a bigger sin to lose hope of Allah's mercy than the sins you have committed. All the sins you have committed are trivial. If you feel Allah cannot forgive you, that is a bigger sin than your personal sins. Because when you say, I am too sinful to be forgiven, you are then accusing Allah of being stingy and miserly. You are limiting the unlimited mercy of Allah. Therefore, no matter what your sins are, turn to Allah in istighfar. Turn to Allah in repentance. And when you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and Allah will bless you with even more. The Prophet Nuh tells us in the Quran to his people that I said to my people, say istighfar and you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up the doors. He will send rain upon you. He will increase your wealth. He will give you more children. He will give you more wealth and, and, and progeny and all the goods of this earth is going to come to you. In another verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if only the people of Mecca said istighfar, I would have opened up the doors of the heaven. All of the barakas of the heavens and earth would fall on them. Istighfar doesn't just forgive your sins. Istighfar gives you a better life in this world and gives you a better life in the hereafter. Oh Muslims, this is the month of maghfirah. This is the month of istighfar. Therefore, my urge to myself and all of you, turn to Allah with a genuine heart of repentance. Turn to Allah wanting to be forgiven. Thank Allah how easy He has made istighfar. If you want to be forgiven, you shall be forgiven. This is Allah's guarantee in the Quran. If you want to be forgiven, you shall be forgiven. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ oh, say O oh my servants who have despaired of Allah's mercy, do not despair. Allah forgives all sins. So turn to Allah, say the istighfar, and especially in these prayers, especially in the sajdas of these prayers, say it from the heart, verbalize it on the tongue, submit to Allah meekly, and you are guaranteed by Allah that your repentance shall be accepted. And inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.